All right, so in this video, uh, this is a good video for you to watch. If you're stuck on the homework problems, please, please, please try the homework problems first and only watch this video if you get stuck or if you want to check your answer, okay? Um, that's going to be the best usage of them. I don't just watch this before attempting anything. Also, as a side note, I was curious how to say that cyclist name uh, in the example for the Tour de France. It's a real person. And so here's, here's the pronunciation. Um, oh yeah, I have, I have sound muted. I'll unmute it so you guys can hear it. TJ van Harderen. So it's really just pronounced, if this website's right, it's really just pronounced TJ. <laughs> and, and T sub J was the variable, which I think is very silly. But I think these people who wrote this book, I think they knew what they were doing. Um, okay. So we're going to start by doing uh, example 1a. State whether the given sums are equal or unequal. In this first one, oh no, I have not figured out what causes it, but sometimes when I tab out, it moves things around. This first one is a sum from i to, goes from 1 to 10 of i, and the sum from k equals 1 to 10 of k. Sum from i equals 1 to 10 of i, the sum k, that's not a k, Jason, you should know what a k is by now, goes from 1 to 10 of k. Are these the same, or are these not the same? And remember, the, the letter doesn't matter. The letter just tells you what you're plugging things into. So this first one is plug in i equals 1 for the first, plug in i equals 2 for the next, and go all the way up till you plug in i equals 10 as the last one. And the second one's very similar. Everywhere that there's a k, you replace with 1. And then add to everywhere that there's a k, you replace with 2. Until the last one, everywhere that there's a k, you replace with 10. So even though they're different letters here, they are, in fact, equal. Now, if I wrote something like this, now they're not equal. Because there's no k's to plug in. This would just be 10i. i plus i plus i plus i 10 times. So this one wouldn't be equal. That's not the problem. All right. That's example one. Example two. <laughs> I don't know why this textbook does it. I need to figure it out. It just keeps moving. Use the rules for sums and powers of integers to compute the sum. The sum, i equals 5 to 10 of i. Oh, that's easy. Because we know the sum of i is just uh, n times n plus 1 over 2, right? Careful. Be very careful. That's only if i is going from 1 some n, but notice we're starting at 5. So you could do this one manually, but it's good practice to do it all out using these, these properties. This is the sum. i goes from 1 to 10 of i. How do we fix this? Because this is actually much more than that. We've added a bunch of things. So if we want to keep things equal, we have to subtract what we've added. We're subtracting i goes from 1 to 4 of i. And this is just that fifth property, that fifth property that we introduced in that second video, kind of backwards. Right? If we have the 5th through 10th, that's just 1st through 10th minus 1st through 4th. Right? If you have the first 10 and you subtract out the first 4, well, you're left with the 5th through the 10th. And now we can use the formula, or we can do it out manually, up to you. Formula is good practice. This first one is n equals 10, n times n plus 1 over 2, minus the second one, n is 4, n times n plus 1 over 2, and you should get 55 minus 10, or 45 as your answer. Next one is number six. 
All right. Sometimes I think maybe it works if I refresh. If I refresh, maybe it fixes itself. Suppose that the sum of the first 100 elements of AI are 15. The sum from I equals 1 to 100 of AI is 15. Oh, <gasps> it worked. And the sum of the first 100 of BIs is negative 12. Number 6 says find sum from 1 to 100 of 3ai plus 4 minus 4bi. Again, this just wants us to use all those properties. We're doing addition, so we can split things up over uh, differences. We can split things up with multiplication. And we can just use those other properties. The sum from i goes from 1 to 100 of the first guy minus the same sum of the second guy. And again, that doesn't get us all the way there, but we can now factor out the 3 and factor out the 4. We get 3 times the sum of the first 100 AIs minus 4 times the sum of the first 100 BIs. And now, you know what this first guy is equal to? First guy is 15. And the second thing is negative 12. We'll get 3 times 15 minus 4 times negative 12. To get 45, it's 48. Or 93. Next problem I want to do for y'all is number 10. All right, so refreshing it does seem to have fixed it. I think it's sometimes when I click. Use summation properties and formulas to rewrite and evaluate the sum. The sum from j equals 11 to 20 of j squared minus 10j. Again, if you want to change this to i, replace all the i's with j's, you can do that. You can replace this with any letter you want. We're going to use those same properties as before, as well as the sum. I goes from 1 and this one for I squared. We'll use those two formulas and uh, use some properties to get them in the right spot first. Also, we're going to have to split this up, right? Because this is starting from 11. When our formulas only start from 1. So lots of things to do here. Start with j goes from 11 to 20. And just write this as j squared minus 10 times the sum of j. I did two steps at once. Because the first step, just like the last problem that we did. Split them up, and then you can factor out that 10 afterwards. Well, now we have to split each of these up into two. So it's going to be the sum of j equals 1 to 20 of j squared minus the sum of j equals 1 to 10 of j squared. That's just the first part, right? The 11th through the 20th is the first through the 20th. Subtracting out, we have to take away the 1st through the 10th. Because if we take out the 1st through the 10th, we're left with 11th through 20th. And then we do the same thing with this other part. We're subtracting 10 times this other sum, which we can split up the same way. j goes from 1 to 20 of j, minus j goes from 1 to 10 of j. And now we can use these two formulas from earlier on to get where we need to go. I think the first one is n times n plus 1 over 2. Second is n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1, I believe, over 6. If I copy these down wrong, you let me know. We'll get that fixed. Get some extra credit. All right, so we'll use both of these. 
n is 20, n is 10, n is 20, n is 10. And then we'll be good. So for squared, n is 20. So we're using this with n is 20. So 20 times 21 times 2 times 20 plus 1, which is 41, all over 6. Now n is 10. 10 times 11 times 21 over 6 minus 10. Now we use the j formula with n being 20. So 20 times 21 all over 2 minus, now n is 10, 10 times 11 over 2. I'm going to plug this into a calculator to get to our answer. All right, so let's plug it in. I don't think we need these other things right now. We got 20 times 21 times 41 over 6 minus 10 times 11 times 21 over 6 minus 10 times 20 times 21 over 2 minus again 10 times 11 over 2. We get 935. What if I got 900, what if I got 936.5? You could get that, right? You have fractions. How do I know this is the wrong answer? I have to be a little careful and always think about what kind of answer to expect. In this original sum, everything's an integer, right? J is always an integer. If we square an integer, multiply an integer by 10, take the difference between those two things, add them all up, it's still a bunch of integers. So in something like this, we should only expect an integer as our answer. And if you ever don't get an integer, watch out, you probably made a calculator or a formula mistake. This doesn't prove that this is right, but it's a good way, like there's no big red flag. All right. Let's move on. Next one is number 16 I want to do. Because we just did 10, right? All right. Let, all right. See, these are where they get a little bit more interesting. Well, a little bit more tedious anyway. So L sub n is the left endpoint sum. R sub n is the right endpoint sum. Compute the left and right for this function. Oh no, it only wants one of them. It just wants R4 for 16. It wants R4 for 1 over x squared plus 1 on negative 2 to 2. All right, so uh, This one is actually, it looks like you can get it with a toolkit function and function transformations, but actually it's, it's actually not, even though it looks like it. One over x squared plus one. Um, this is something that you could, you could definitely graph with Desmos. It's going to look kind of like a bell curve. And we want to do it from negative two. Negative one. Up to two. And it wants four rectangles. And it wants the right rectangles. So these are our four intervals. One, two, three, four. Nope, that's not right, Jason. One, two, three, four. Pretend they're all the same size. And we draw rectangles on the right. So we go to the right of the first subinterval, go up to the function. The right of the second subinterval, we, we're pretending these are all the same size. Right of the third, right of the fourth. And remember earlier I said upper sums and lower sums are not the same as right and left. And here you can see it. In this section, we're looking at upper sums. But in this section, we're looking at lower sums. And again, it just really depends on whether the function's increasing, positive first derivative, or decreasing, negative first derivative. Okay, so to find R4, 
All we have to do is, what's the width of each of these intervals? The width is just one. Every rectangle is just length times width. What's the height of this? It's going to be the function value at negative one. What's the height of this? Function value at zero. The height of this? Function value at positive one. And the last one's the function value at positive two. You can just plug this all in. Multiplying by one doesn't do anything. So f of negative one is going to give us a half. f of zero is one. f of one is a half. And f of two is uh, a fifth, I believe. Add that all up, you get 2.2 .2 is our approximate area. Fun fact, if you want to calculate this exactly using Calc 2, it involves arctangent. All right. Um, yeah, that's kind of interesting. Next problem. Last one of the video. Not really doing application problems in this video because the application problems I did in the application section were uh, just literally from the textbook anyway. From the homework, I mean. All right, graph the function and then use a calculator or a computer program to evaluate the left and right endpoint sums. Is the area, well, let's do one thing at a time. We're gonna first do it. We got 30, we're gonna look at L50 and R50, and then we'll answer some more questions about it. For y equals x plus one divided by x squared minus one, on the interval two to four. All right, so these, these are where things get a little tricky. A little tricky. And I should have mentioned this in the video. I'll make a mention of it on the actual homework assignment itself. Um, there's some quick ways and some longer ways of doing this. We're gonna do it, um, we're gonna do it the fun way. A little quick, a little less quick. Use Desmos. Um, does Desmos have a summation feature? It does. Good, 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 good. Well, let's first graph it, okay? X plus 1 divided by x squared minus 1. Now we're looking at approximation for the integral. Sorry, I said it again. The area under the curve from 2 to 4. Let's look mostly from 2 to 4. We can fix the y-axis. Yeah, we can see things pretty well here. So we're looking for the uh, area between these two between these two uh, vertical lines. So let's copy down this graph and draw a little picture, and then see if we can write it down and use Desmos to help us out. Okay. So what we have, we have a graph that uh, looks like that, from two to four, and we want to divide this into 50 pieces. This is going to be a lot of rectangles. Start with the lefts. Left, you know, 50 of these. I'll have to write all 50, but we're writing a lot. Dot, dot, dot. Okay. So, remember your Riemann sums. This is really what we're using here, Riemann sums. The left 50, using that formula from our notes, is going to be the sum from i goes from 1 all the way to n, which is 50, of the function value at some x, and we'll use i minus 1 because it's the left, we use i if it's the right, times the width of each interval. And if we can fill in the blanks here, then, uh, then we can get to where we need to go. All right, and actually this filling in the blank is not really going to work for Desmos, so we'll probably, I'll probably tell you to use Wolfram Alpha. But this is good practice. So what's the width of each one? Well, the total distance 
is not 50. The total distance, right, is 2. And if we're dividing 2, that's just the distance between 2 and 4. If we divide 2 into 50 pieces, well, how big is that? Just 2 over 50. Which one is 1 over 25? Use the sum, i equals 1, to 50. Delta x is just 1 over 25. So all we need is a formula now for x sub i minus 1, or x sub i, and we'll be good to go. So where's the first one? The first one is at 2. Right, we're using left rectangles right now. Where's the second one? Well, it's kind of hard to see. The first one's at two. The second one is just one rectangle over from two. There's just two plus one over 25. That's two and one twenty-fifth. One over 25 is 0 0.04. No. Yeah, it is. Hold on. 1 over 24. 1 over 25. <laughs> All right, which is what we wanted. 1 over 25.04. Great. <laughs> so where's the second one, right? Well, that's just going to be one more rectangle over. Another 1 over 25th over. So what's the pattern here? The ith one is always going to start at 2, and then just however many, 1 over 25s times the, whichever one we're at. If i is 0, it's just 2. If i is 1, it's 2 and 1 25ths. If i is 2, it's 2 and 2 25ths, and so on. All right. So this is our Riemann sum right here, where x sub i is 2 plus i over 25. You could write this in a couple different ways. This is L50. And again, R50 is almost exactly identical. Remember that we had the formula for L and R, and the only difference was one had an x sub i and one had an x sub i minus 1. Okay. That's L sub 50 and R sub 50. And that's how you can do it by hand. And uh, I'll leave instructions as well on the homework assignment for how you can plug in and get an actual number for these. Okay. And what does it want us to do for the second half here? Is the area under the curve on the given interval better approximated by the left Riemann sum or the right Riemann sum? And it might be the same. What you can do for that one is you can go to Wolfram Alpha. You can find it exactly. Area under, what's our function here? x plus 1 over x squared minus 1. From 2 to 4. I should just be able to give it to you right away. That this area... Uh oh, it's spoiling things for you. It has to do with uh, an integral. It's actually the common log of three. We'll show where that comes from later on in this class. 1.0986 about. The actual is about 1.0986. And I'm pretty sure that this can get an approximation either as well. F to end point, uh, Riemann sum. I wonder how smart Wolfram Alpha it is. I'll give you instructions in the homework um, before I do this. I think it's pretty smart. Let's see how smart it is. No, it doesn't, it doesn't know what this is. I'll figure it out and then give you guys instructions. But then you can compare whether the left one's better or the right one's better. There's a couple of ways of doing that. And uh, that's what we're doing here. All right. Uh, hope this answers your questions. Let me know if you have more questions. Good luck. Welcome to Math 152. <laughs>
Um, this, this is a pretty special section, but uh, it'll get better, I promise. Um, and it's already pretty good, so that's exciting. <laughs> All right, have a great rest of your day, and bye-bye. Uh,